Welcome to Lesson 6.6. .6. In this lesson, we're going to review going over how to create a table of values. Now, a table of values is where you record inputs and outputs. Usually, your input is your x-coordinate and your output is your y-coordinate. Then you use those two x and y-coordinates to plot them on a graph, and then you can graph a relation or an equation. So many years ago in grade six, I introduced you to this input-output machine where you would have an input, something that you would put into the machine. It would be a number of some sort. And then in here, something would happen. This is your relation or your expression. And it would shoot out the result of your input being modified by the relation. Now, the relation could be anything from like x plus 4, 3x plus 1, um, those are relations, or, or uh, I guess you, they're also referred to as expressions. Notice that they're not equations yet, but we will get there. The input is the number you start with before you calculate the relation, and the output is what you get after you're done. So let's take a look at an example here. If the relation or the expression is x plus 4, and the input is 5, what you're going to do is take this input, you're going to put it into the x plus 4, and since the x is 5, what you're going to get is 5 plus 4. That's the, the, the input-output machine's mathematical calculation for you. And it's going to spit out 9. So that means if your input was 5, your output was 9. And then you could go to the graph and you could plot this point. OK, so how do we show that? Let's take a look at an example. My relation or my expression is 3x minus 4. And my input is x is equal to 2. So to do this, you're going to put down the relation first, 3x take away 4. And then you're going to do a substitution. You're going to take the x out of the game, and you're going to put the 2 in its place. Now, 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 take away 4 is 2. How am I going to mark this? Formula, substitution, answer, just like when we did all our stuff with uh, areas and all that. All right. so there you go. This would generate the point 2, 2. Your input and your output, or your x and your y. OK, 2x two on two plus 8, and the input's 10. So you do this one. All right, so I've got 2x plus 8. First off, you calculate, so you copy down the expression. Take the x out of the game, put in an, its substitution of 10. 2 times 10 is 20, and that gives you 28. Formula, substitution, answer. This step here is optional. You don't have to put it in. OK, so how does that work for a table of values? Because this one here would have given us an input of 10 and an output of 28. In order to graph something, you have to have at least two points if it's a straight line. If it's a curved line, then you have to have multiple points. And otherwise, it becomes very difficult to do if you try to do one or two points. So what we're going to do is we're going to be doing some very simple ones to begin with. I'm going to give you an equation. X is equal to 2, sorry, Y is equal to 2X plus 4. And you need to select the inputs, or the inputs will be given to you. Here are the inputs here that have been given to you. You have to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then you're going to get an output. You're going to record that output here. And then you're going to put the pair there for the future when we do our graphing. Now, if I do just one of them, and I'm, or sorry, just, and I just make a mistake, um, then everything after that could be wrong. If I do two and then try to fill in the graph from the, the graph uh, from what the differences are, uh, it can also be a problem. You can have some mistakes there. So this is what we're going to do. And I'll explain as we go along. You become clearer if you're not quite sure what I mean. First off, we're going to start out with the first point. And yes, you're going to have to calculate the first three points. And then when you have the first three points done, you can put them into the table, and then you should see some sort of a pattern, and you could fill out the rest of the chart, OK? So let's start out with x is equal to negative 2. So my equation was y equals 2x plus 4. So we're going to do this for x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1, and x is equal to 0. All right. So x is equal to negative 2, same as we did before, formula. Substitution and answer. 2 times negative 2 is, is negative 4, and a negative 4 plus 4 is a 0. So this output 
is a zero. That means that my first pair is negative two, zero. All right, now let's try x is equal to negative one. So y is equal to two x plus four. Take out the x, put in the negative one, and add the four. So two times negative one is negative two. And a negative 2 and a positive 4 give you a 2. So this is going to be a 2. So that means negative 1 will have a value, uh, sorry, an output of 2. All right? Now, I'm going to stop here for a second and just go over a couple of things. When you get to filling out this chart, you should be able to see a pattern occurring here. In grade 8 and grade 9, we only do linear equations. Uh, and the reason for that is that this is straight, simple stuff at the beginning. Later on, you'll get into nonlinear equations in grade 10 and 11, but then you're going to have the TI-83 or a TI-84 calculator to help you. So in this case, we're just going to have to do it by hand. Now, if you did this correct, you can see that we're going up by 2. We should get a 4 there. Let's find out. So y is equal to 2x plus 4. y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 4. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 gives us a 4. So in fact, we actually do get a 4 here. So you can tell here I've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. I can just fill in the rest of the chart now because I have a pretty confident that I'm going up by 2s. So I'm going to have 0, negative, sorry, not negative 4. Let's get that out of there. 0 and uh, 4. 1 and 6 and 2 and 8. Now, why do I do three of them? The reason is, it's called redundancy. If I make a mistake on one of these two, my error will be carried out throughout the whole table. If I take a look and do all three, I should be able to see a pattern coming down the Y and the pattern should stay the same. Now, I'm going to erase the x for a second. I'll go over here to the side. I've got an x and I've got a y in my t-chart. Let's say, for argument, that we did negative 2 here, but we made a mistake. Say we dropped the negative down here or something. And we have 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8. All right? And then we do the next one correct. Negative 1. And we do actually get it correct here. And we get 2. Now, what does that look like it's happening here? It looks like it's going down by 6. So if you stop right here and you go, okay, well, that's easy. Um, 2 take away 6 is negative 4. Negative 4 take away 6 is negative 10. And negative 10 take away 6 is negative 16. So there I go. I got everything 100%. This whole table is incorrect because we made one error here. All right? Now, let's assume that... The third time, we didn't just assume there was a mistake. Let's say we calculated it out. So we did do 8 here. We did do 2 here. But then we calculated the x equals 0, and we got a 4. Now look what's happening here as you go down. Four down so 8 down to a 2, then back up to a 4. In linear equations, we either go down by the same amount, or we go up by the same amount. It never changes. All right, unless we get into squares with us later. Okay, so because this isn't going up to the same amount, we would have thought this would have been a different number, not negative four. We know that one of these has to be in error. So we can go back now and we can find our error and fix it before we go on any further. What's going to follow after this is graphing all this data. If you've got the wrong table of values because you made the wrong calculation, then all of these points will be incorrect. And then when you do your graph, your graph will all be incorrect. So you have to build in redundancy or a way to double check yourself. And that's why you've got to do three points. One, two, three. Do all three. And if you get the same amount of decrease or the same amount of increase here, you're good to go. Let's turn the page. All right. Let's take a look at this one here. Ah, uh, the value, we don't need to read okay. table of, The values of a table of value can be summarized by placing the numbers in pairs. We call these coordinate pairs because when we, where we place the input value 
uh, it's called the x, act, x value and the output value is the y. We can use these to plot them on a, on a graph, okay? Now, order matters. The input must be first. The output must be second. So now you can see I'm going from negative 5 to positive 5. That's quite a few numbers, but I only have to worry about the first three. Okay, so I've got my equation. y is equal to 3x, take away 2. To start out with, x is equal to negative 5. So y is equal to 3 times negative 5 minus 2. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And negative 15, take away 2 more, is negative 17. So when x is 5, or sorry, negative 5, this is negative 17, which gives us a pair of negative 5, negative 17. Okay, now what do I get to do? I get to do the same thing again. And now I'm going to use negative 4. So y is equal to 3x minus 2. y is equal to 3 times negative 4 minus 2. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And negative 12, take away 2 more, is negative 14. So we have a possible pattern here, don't we? If you take a look, it's going from a 17 down to a 14. That's a decrease of 3. So if we've done it correctly, um, I should be able to get the negative 3 become 11. So let's double check. So I've got y is equal to 3x, take away 2. So now I'm going to use that x is equal to negative 3. So y is equal to 3 times negative 3 minus 2. So 3 times negative 3 is 9. And 9 take away 2 more is, in fact, negative 11. So you can see here that I've gone down 3 in both cases. Because I've got all three of them correct, I can pretty well guarantee that my table is, is going to be okay. So what I need to do now is to fill, finish filling in all the information. So negative 11, you go up by 3, that's negative 8, negative 5, negative 2, 1, uh, 4, 7, 10, and 13. I've done everything correct there. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. But if you take a look, those are my y outputs. All I have to do now is to make up my x coordinates so I can graph this. And that's just a matter of copying them over into a coordinate pair. Oh, sorry, not negative 1. 2, 4, 3, 7, 4, 10, and 5, 13. All right, so that's how you do it. I'm marking this. It's real simple. I'm going to mark formula, substitution, answer, formula, substitution, answer, formula, substitution, answer, and that will get you these three right there. And then you can use your the pattern to follow and do the next ones. And I'll be marking these probably a half mark each as they go. Okay, so now it's time for you to take over. Two on to, sorry, y is equal to 2x plus 5. I want you to do from negative 5 to positive 5, please. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so now we're going to start with the first one. x is equal to negative 5. My equation is y is equal to 2x plus 5. So we're going to do our substitution, our first one. Take out the x and put the negative 5 in its place. So there's our substitution step. Now 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5. So our first one, when I have negative 5 as my input, my output is also negative 5. Interesting. Okay. Now, that would mean negative 5, negative 5. Now, let's take a look at our next one. And this will be y is equal to 2x plus 5. Only now I'm going to use negative 4 as my input. So y is equal to 2 onto negative 4 plus 5. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. So y is equal to negative 3. So when x is negative 4, y is negative 3, give me negative 4, negative 3. So it looks like we're going up by 2. So if this is correct, the next one should be a negative 1. But let's not take it for granted. Let's do the calculations and make sure we haven't made a mistake. So I'm going to be using negative 3 this time. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And negative 6 plus 5 is, in fact, negative 1. So, it looks like we have, we can be pretty confident in our pattern. We're going up by 2. So this should be 1, 3, 5, 7, 
9, 11, 13, and 15. And our coordinate pairs, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 3, 0, 5, 1, 7, 2, 9, 3, 11, 4, 13, and 5, 15. Okay, so hopefully you did it correctly. Last example on the next page. So, you're on your own. I want you to do the whole thing, and then uh, we'll see how well you did. So, pause the recording and do this. All right, so let's see how you did. First thing we're going to do is copy down our equation. Y is equal to negative x plus 3. And I purposely chose this one because it's going to be kind of tricky. I want to use an input of negative 5, which means the x is negative 5. But my x is negative. So this is kind of tricky. Plus 3. And negative negative is a positive. So that becomes 5. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So when x is negative 5, y output is 8. All right, let's take a look at the next one. y is equal to negative x plus 3. So y is equal to, and I'm using the input of negative 4 this time. So again, negative negative 4 is a positive 4, so 4 plus 3 is 7. So you see I came down 1. So if I did this correctly, that means my next one should also should be a 6, because I'm coming down by 1 each case. So y is equal to negative x plus 3. This time my input is negative 3. Negative negative 3 plus 3. So y is going to be equal to a negative negative is a positive 3 plus 3, so y is equal to 6. So in fact, it did work out. Okay? So now that we've got negative 4, 7, negative 3, 6, and notice we're coming down by 1s each time, we can be confident because all our calculations verify this. This is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. So this becomes negative 2, 5, negative 3, sorry, negative 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 0, 4, negative 1, and 5, negative 2. Okay, so remember how I'm going to mark this. Formula, substitution, answer. Formula, substitution, answer. Formula, substitution, answer. You should be getting all of these in place. And of course, these are your next ones. These are your guesses. So they're probably half mark each, depending on how big the table is that I'm giving you. We're going to need this. Initially, I don't want you to worry about putting it down <coughs> on the assignment because we're not going to need it. But tomorrow, or so when we start graphing, you will. So for this assignment, don't worry about putting your coordinate pairs down. Just stick with your input-output table here and, your and do all your work that's required. Okay, so finish up the assignment, and we'll see you next lesson.